All right. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I'd like to 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 thank uh, the organizers of UK Tag to for inviting me. Uh, that was a last minute thing. I think uh, one of the presenter fell sick. I'm sorry to hear that, but uh, that gives me an opportunity to uh, to present to you about MQTT messaging in LabVIEW. Um, uh, we'll go through some uh, some presentations, more formal. Uh, Couple couple slides, uh, but so my name is François Normandin, and I'm based in in Montreal, Canada. Um, I'm a certified LabVIEW architect and LabVIEW champion, and uh, you see my credentials. I'll put them back as well at the end. So if you if you want to uh, to get in touch with me or or to look the GitHub stuff that I've got posted. Uh, uh, you're welcome to to communicate with me. I try to be very responsive to to anyone that that asks questions. All right. So my outline uh, for today's presentation, uh, I'll do quick introductions, but also uh, then go to to present you an overview of the QTT protocol in general. So um, I, I don't know what is the level of comfort of the audience here with with MQTT. That's why I ask in the chat so we we can maybe. Uh, Maybe go 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 over to make sure that everybody understands what what it is, and then then dive into the LabVIEW implementation of a server and and uh, client libraries that is completely uh, LabVIEW native. And of course, some of you have probably used clients uh, from in Python, in JavaScript, or or other other languages, uh, C and the likes. And at the end, I'd like to do a, a few demos uh, featuring LabVIEW prominently, but also a little bit of uh, bridging with Python. Uh, when uh, Sri told me that uh, there was uh, a lot of Python enthusiasts here, and that would be a, a good a good bridge to build. Um, uh, I asked uh, one of my colleagues, I think he's on the call, so uh, Simon Weisbuller, I want to, to acknowledge uh, Simon's contribution here. He provided me with some uh, some uh, some Python. Hey, hi, Simon. Um, and um, and yeah, so so you'll see. It's I'm not a Python expert. It was just enough so that I could I could you know reuse this code and, and modify it to my liking. So so that's that's pretty basic. You'll see, but at least we can share everything with you uh, open source. All right. Without further ado. Um, I went more vintage than the two previous presenters with our giants, our female hashtag. Um, I chose someone that is uh, that was in the 18th and 19th century. So um, because of my my French uh, language here in Canada, I'm a French native French speaker. Uh, I chose a French mathematician, uh, and uh, so Sophie Germain. She she was uh, using a uh, a pseudonym to get into the math circle at the time because mathematics was a a profession that was uh, reserved for uh, for men only and uh, and so because of of people like her uh, today we enjoy you know uh, more diversity in our uh, stem uh, stem programs and and i think i think in that in that you know uh, perspective. She she was a pioneer. So fun fun fact. She she was calling herself Antoine Auguste Leblanc, and uh, so that just means Tony White essentially uh, for 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 you English speakers out there. Um, and uh, during the Napoleon's invasion of uh, Pr Prussia, uh, she she asked her father, who was a prominent. Uh, a banker uh, in contact with uh, with generals and all that to to ask them to save the life of Professor Gauss, with whom she she had been corresponding a lot, and and that's that's when actually the generals, when they met with Professor Ga Professor Gauss, they they told him that who she was, and uh, and that kind of revealed that, that 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 she was a lady actually, and he was quite pleased with that, and and, and there you go. So um, Sophie Germain, uh, you should should read up. On, her, on Wikipedia, quite an interesting yeah. read. All right, to finalize the presentations before we go into the the the, the real topic at hand, I uh, just want to to tell you that a little bit about me. I'm I characterize myself as an open source enthusiast. I I've got a lot of projects of open source projects, and I started the G open source project for LabVIEW. That some of you might have seen the VIPM community as the LabVIEW open source project. 
Uh, I decided to change the name just because it's not LabVIEW that is open source. I don't claim to open source LabVIEW. That was an error on my part. So it's really the G open source project for LabVIEW from now on. So you'll see both uh, as I change the names. Um, MQTT is a big part of that. There's also OHOT 2.0 uh, libraries, open serializer, some timing methods, cron, UI tools, a lot of stuff. Uh, I'm also a board member at GCentral. Uh, I don't know if, if you've heard of GCentral, but it's an organization, non-for-profit organization that is there to try to, 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 improve, uh, to improve the way that the, the LabVIEW community shares, uh, shares content, especially packages, but uh, reuse code in, in general. So you'll hear, you'll hear more about, about GCentral in the coming months and, and the coming year. Uh, we've got a uh, few nice things in the pipeline that, that we're eager to present to you. And lastly, well, I'm maintainer uh, of JKI's Karaya unit test framework in LabVIEW and also the JKI State Machine Objects framework. Okay, so MQTT. What is MQTT? First off, maybe if, if um, people out there can use the, uh, the wave hand or clapping or whatever to, to let me know if you've heard of MQTT before, if this is something familiar, if it's just a reminder, um, or you know, if you stick quiet, maybe that just means that it's either that you don't have access to that clapping hand or that you uh, <laughs> that you don't know about it. Okay, so I, f I see a few. I assume that there's a big bell curve distribution here where uh, some people never heard of the name of MQT MQTT and others have used it uh, profusely. So, uh, all right, let's, uh, let's get started. Thank you very much, uh, guys. So MQTT is lightweight. This is its principal advantage. It's a communication protocol. So, well, protocol, uh, kind of a framework for encoding, if you will, so that, um, so that a devices can communicate asynchronously with each other. It's very tolerant to, uh, to, uh, connection disconnections and to latency. So that's one of its big advantage. The package, uh, the packets uh, that, that it uses, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk a bit more about these features in the coming slides, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's more lightweight than, than uh, most, uh, most packets. Like for example, if you want to encode your, uh, uh, embed your, your message into a CAN uh, packet for transmission on, on, uh, on a with CAN protocol, or you want to use uh, HTTP, for example. So all these uh, will we'll, we'll create adders and wrappers around so that the message is well understood on the other end. And, and MQTT is, is very lightweight in that, uh, in that sense. So pretty good for low bandwidth and low energy devices. Uh, I, I've, I've seen in the chat some people use it with the IoT Foundation. So if you're, if you're deploying uh, sensor uh, in your backyard, for example, for monitoring the weather, and it's 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 running on battery. And MQTT is a very good uh, very good uh, framework to look at for for this. It's suitable to run on any anything that is bidirectional and and ordered packets. So ordered, what we mean is that when you send packets, you will receive them in the same order they were sent, or the, they will be decoded. That's what TCP does. Um, that's what network streams does because it's built on TCP. That's what WebSocket does as well. That's what also you can do with serial communication if you were to implement your own. So, so it's really anything, anything that is a bidirectional communication uh, can, can, can implement uh, MQTT. And in there, there's also the lossless uh, keyword in, in the center of the page. And, and I, when at first, at first I, I, I came to that, I, I thought, oh, it, it means that, that when I send a package, it's for sure that it's going to arrive. And that's not really the case. It's really just really means that if there's any compression, the data can be decompressed without loss. So, so it's, it's uh, it, byte for byte. It, it, that's, what, that's what you'll get. And there are different le level of quality of service. That means that you can, you can decide what, uh, what level of certainty you want to uh, on the on the packet that you sent, will it be received as it been received as it been received and acknowledged and things like that? So the MQTT implementation, if we if we dive a little bit 
in to love you. Uh, so this um, this broker uh, and client, uh, native LabVIEW broker and client library is is trying to achieve a full compliance with OASIS 3.1.1 so, uh, specification. 5.0 exists as well. It's very new. It started, I think, in 2019, and it, it it's backward compatible, but it adds some authentication, especially. So, so it, this is not implemented yet in in this framework. So, if you're using um, uh, 3.1 uh, specification, uh, this library can can be for you. Um, everything has been built as uh, with classes, but you don't need to know the classes uh, to to use the to use this library. It's really just for, for reusability and extendability. Um, control packet is the base unit that shares all the all the features to be able to encode, send, uh, receive, and, and, and validate packets. But, but all the different packets, and there are 14 of them, you see them listed here from connect, 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 connection acknowledgement, disconnect, Publish, publish acknowledgement, and so on and so forth. Uh, there are a few, a few different, uh, different, different things. Subscribe and unsubscribe. So MQTT is really at its core meant for a publish subscribe uh, messaging architecture. But as we'll see, we can reuse it in other configurations as well. Okay. Whoops. Did I jump ahead too much? No. That's that's good. So I'm going to define quality of service a bit here because that that is might be a new word for you. Um, quality of service has three levels in MQTT and zero, one, and two. Zero is really just fire and forget. You send a message and you don't know if it's going to be received. You're, you will never receive an acknowledgement from the server that 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 the message has been received by the server. QoS one means that. The server is going to acknowledge that you've that it's received a message, and so you've if essentially transferred ownership of uh, of the message to the server, and the server will be responsible at that point in time to to keep track of the message and uh, do the other part, the shaking with the subscriber on the other side on the other side that is you know registered to one of your your topics your your message and qs2 is when you want to have uh, kind of a two-way and shaking you're sending a message the server acknowledges that it received a message and then you will tell the server okay i i acknowledge that you've received it now you can delete it and 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 the server will 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 delete the message so all these these little level of services uh, have a big impact on the latency of the system. Of course, uh, when it's uh, when it's local, if you use the the framework for inter-process communication on the same machine, it's going to be extremely fast, even when you have a QoS uh, of two. But uh, you need to to of course. Uh, Make sure that the latency of your connection will not uh, will not impede the number of messages that you're trying to send. So each message can have different QoS, uh, but the subscription on the other end needs to select one uh, when you subscribe. Got uh, some diagrams here that I took uh, from the internet. I give credit here, devopedia.org and QTT. There are a few diagrams there for developers that want to 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 really understand what's going on under the hood, that's 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 a that's a nice uh, a nice place to to look for. Uh, I also recommend the uh, uh, mqtt.org uh, website, which is uh, which is the official MQTT uh, resource. So in this example, you've got a broker and two clients. One one is a publisher, and the other one is a subscriber. In this particular example, the subscriber is shown as QoS equals zero, meaning that the server will just publish the message as soon as uh, it, it's received to all the subscribers, but will not care whether the subscriber received it or not. Uh, wait for an acknowledgement, basically, from the, from the subscriber. But this diagram works both ways. So, so between the subscriber and the, 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 the server, or between the publisher and the server. Right here, top diagram, very simple. Send a message. The publisher 
can delete the message, it knows that that message is gone forever, doesn't need to, to, to keep it in, in, in memory. In case there's a disconnection event, it will not try to resend that message. On the QoS one, if it's at least one, it will store the message, send it to the server, and will keep hang on to that message until the server acknowledges. If for some reason the connection uh, is lost and you reconnect, then you know that you need to resend that message again because you've never received the, the acknowledgement. And QoS two, well, uh, you do the round trip like I explained before, where you're basically telling the server, okay, you, you you don't need to keep that in memory anymore. So the server usually stores uh, a state of all the messages that have not been acknowledged or, or ready for release. So, okay, if we, if, we, if we move one level down, so I was talking about the, the protocol itself, uh, the MQTT protocol and, and the uh, kind of entity that the implementation in LabVIEW was based on just having a bunch of uh, packets that were coded into a class and uh, into a bunch of classes, uh, which you can see in this hierarchy in the middle, the MQTT cube uh, that is in light green with all its hierarchy be below. Those are just, just specifics for each packages that, that encode a, a control packet of type FQ MQTT. Now, the rest of the hierarchy that you see around it is the implementation for the broker and the client. In the red boxes, are the things that are specific to brokers. So if you just use the client, you can strip strip those. And uh, and this this is not necessarily super important uh, from a you know a user perspective, but this is an open source project. You can dive into the code and look at it. So this this will this will give you a, a good uh, good idea of what's in there. This code is probably um, Pretty easy to strip out and 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 to 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 change the MQTT part and reuse it for any other type of packet. So if you wanted to have a a nice connection handler, subscription mechanism, session handling uh, framework, uh, you can you can definitely uh, pick up the code there and 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 reuse that for your own purpose on other projects as well. Um, new version that I released this week uh, of the MQTT broker. I had received some feedback that there was uh, a need to get some uh, some tra tracers, uh, some logging in the in the broker to see how many messages arrive and, and go. So so what I've done is is added the tracer uh, tracer virtual uh, virtual class. It's really just a stub with two uh, incoming incoming uh, packets and outgoing packets, and so you can you can inject your own uh, your own uh, Tracer, so I'll, I'll, I'll give a give a hint about that in the demonstration later on. This is available on the VIPM community uh, uh, repository. So if you have VIPM, that's uh, ju ju just use uh, MQTT buzzword or uh, as a filter or uh, LabVIEW open source or something like that, and you'll find it. This project has been. Um, completely built with the test-driven approach perspective. And that means that um, test-driven approach from a uh, development perspective is much slower than just, hey, I know what I want to do and I'm just going to code and do it. Um, the reason I did that was it was a pet project that was not for any, any job-related um, uh, goals. Uh, it was uh, something that I just wanted to to do, and it started small. And I wanted to to test a TDD approach to see if if it were you know something uh, how much time it takes to really really uh, start from the requirements and write the unit test before you write the actual code. And so and so this is this is what test driven development uh, is for. Um, it's probably well known in the. Um, in, in some some circles where you have to to comply with very strict regulations, uh, but in the case of uh, you know LabVIEW developers in the lab, usually we we skip that and we we go straight at the code, and I, I totally understand that. So this was uh, this was kind of an experiment. 
Um, there are 141 normative, normative requirements that I took from the OASIS specification, and I created them in Git, GitHub like as an issue. Um, all of them are marked, and, and when they're solved with unit tests that demonstrate that they work, then they're closed. And so far, I've closed only 68 of them. However, 90% uh, of the server requirements are fulfilled anyway. It's just that I don't have proofs that they work because when you when you you do client PubRel, you know, packet ordering, but, well, probably it's done because you've done it for another uh, topic ordering, but if, if it's not proven, I keep it there. A hundred percent of the client requirements are fulfilled, as, uh, however. So, so if you use the client uh, from this project to connect to an external uh, uh, server, another broker that is done in Python, in, in C, or in whatever uh, uh, project, or even on, in the cloud, uh, that should work fairly, fairly out of the box as well. As I said, uh, it's not obvious sometimes to just close a requirement when you're in test-driven development mode because uh, you want to make sure that everything everything has a test. And for example, just if I take just one one of them, like QS equal to delivery protocol, yes, it works, um, but I didn't close it because there are eight sub sub tests that need to be to be done, and and I'm pretty sure one of those uh, you know might have a corner case that doesn't pass. So so I. I I've shied away from from that, but but the project is is fairly well advanced though. Some things that are not yet uh, available in the broker are um, retain flags, will messages, and duplicates. Uh, these are flags that you can mark so that you tell the broker when you're the client. You tell the broker, I want this message to be retained so that, uh, for example, when the new subscriber arrives and 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 I haven't published after he joined, he connected, I want this message to still be sent to that uh, to that node. A, a good example would be you have your uh, your sensor in the backyard that publishes temperature every 30 minutes to save uh, to save on on battery life. and And you want to make sure that if your app connects that it gets the latest one and doesn't have to wait for 29 minutes for the next update. So you put the retain flag. Those are the kind of little tidbits that, that are not done in the LabVIEW MQTT broker implementation, uh, but the client handles that. And so if you connect to a remote one, that, that's going to work for you. Uh, keep alive, uh, that's when you don't communicate too much. Uh, after a certain time, the connection should, should close itself and you need to use a ping packets to, to keep the, the connection alive. This is not implemented, so for now, it, it just goes on forever and just waits on, on the TCP connection or whichever connection uh, reference that you use to, to just disappear, Thing, things like that. Okay. Uh, a little bit into before we go to demos, I, I'd like to 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 get a good chunk uh, chunk of, of demo time here uh, with the LabVIEW and Python code. I think I still have twenty minutes for that, so I'll I'll I'll, I'll just just you know accelerate a little bit the pace here. And and if you have any questions, of course, uh, uh, don't hesitate to to use the chat. So. The broker here was the goal because there are a few uh, clients, uh, MQTT clients that are out there, and for most of them, they work pretty well. Uh, also, you can very easily just just use uh, just use a broker uh, client from the, in, in Python and call it uh, call it from LabVIEW if you will. Uh, but but to have it natively in in in, in uh, let's say having a server a broker running on a compact Rio. Um, you need the, the broker to be uh, uh, either uh, directly in LabVIEW or to install uh, install a, a broker using a, uh, using a, an open source library out there and, and and make the hook with LabVIEW. So I thought I'm a LabVIEW developer. I'm going to build a broker that runs on RT RT as well, and and that was really the goal. However, I. As I did that, I realized quickly that I need a client anyway because the client is what will allow me to test the broker, and I don't want to spawn, you know, a mosquito uh, uh, use mosquito client with a LabVIEW broker. That kind of, you know, was redundant. And I noticed that 
with the four loops that I had for incoming connection, reconstruct the packet, and dealing the packet and sending the packet back to, uh, to forwarding it to to uh, to whoever uh, was uh, was uh, registered for it or to have an acknowledgement packet. This was actually uh, very symmetric to what a client looked like. So if you see that the top part here, they're virtually identical. It's just that there's a uh, the forward packet is kind of reversed, uh, swap left, right. And and that allowed me to just refactor the library and say, OK, there's an MQTT base uh, class that will do everything. And we're going to just supplement it with uh, handling the incoming packet that will be a client income uh, handling or a server handling. The server does a little bit more things like, like sending it to uh, subscriptions, uh, subscribers. Uh, but both of them maintain sessions. Both of them uh, have, uh, have the same processing decoding for packets because they're, they're completely symmetric. There are a couple of abstraction layers, and that's maybe for those of you out there that would like to extend such a framework to, to your liking. So uh, the control packets are really uh, just a basic common pattern. Basically, wh whatever bytes arrive, uh, it reconstructs the uh, the message. And at the end, well, you output uh, you you output and execute. So there's a factory pattern that will say, oh yes, this is a published packet that I've received. And then then the command pattern will be used to to execute on that. When you handle the uh, the incoming packet, it's gonna it's gonna you know, act as a publish packet or connect packet or, or whatever other. Uh, there's a serializer. By default, I use the flatten string. I view flatten string, but because this is definitely not very compatible with anything out there, like if you communicate with Python or or uh, you have a web page that, that is running JavaScript uh, library client, uh, MQTT client, uh, you want to have that in probably JSON. So there's a way to inject a serializer of your liking. And I provide a few like JSON, XML, Base64 uh, wrapping. There's also a tracer and a logging uh, that you can inject. Uh, they're completely virtual, but you, you, can, you can inject them uh, at will. And also uh, the connection. You'll see this is something that is fairly, fairly useful to abstract because um, sometimes we use TCP. For example, all this project is, is coded in LabVIEW 2013 because that's my reference. Uh, version for anything open source so that it's got wide adoption and uh, the secure TCP like uh, using TLS 1.2 is something that uh, that came in LabVIEW 2020 so having an abstraction for the, the connection allows us to build a secure TCP uh, connection class and inject it uh, with La if you use LabVIEW 2020, but you still keep all the rest of the code in LabVIEW 2013, which is, I think, I think pretty nice. There's a local queue, there's a WebSocket implementation, um, but pretty much any type of connection, again, bidirectional, would, uh, would work. Okay, I'm switching now to presentations uh, to to the to the demo. So just so that you see what I'll present, there's going to be in that LabVIEW project that will be open source uh, for you guys. There's a PubSub demonstration uh, that is located in there, and there's also a request reply to show how you can leverage uh, the the MQTT protocol to do your own request reply instead of the standard uh, pub sub. And lastly, there's um, there's the MQTT client applications. It's not shown here, but that's where um, I have something more uh, professional looking that will uh, uh, that you can reuse and, and put to your liking. And, and it also uh, features some Python Python stuff. All right. Uh, this is the address. Uh, it's gonna come back at the end, or we can post that in the in the chat, uh, maybe. Uh, but um, let me let me stop my presentation here and the slideshow. There you go. So you still see my Lavi project, I assume. I'm going to start with uh, presenting to you the uh, MQTT server. 
So created and tried to do a nice looking uh, nice looking uh, VI there uh, that will just log any any uh, any messages received by the by the framework. Nothing nothing uh, for incoming and outgoing, really just just the published message by anyone in the system. And as you can see, there are two loops here. The first at the top here, we we start by configuring configuring our uh, our connection. So in this case, it's going to be a TCP connection running on the 1883 port. Inject that into the server. Register for events. Start the server. Once we're started, we will be able to connect. Actually, it's going to connect automatically in this case. We would not. No, it doesn't connect. It's the server. Sorry, I was mis <laughs> misguided. It's the client that needs to connect. So the server will start serving uh, as soon as we're we're uh, we're here. It starts the con connection handler in the background and and monitors for for new sessions, new connections. All right. Um, I've got a number of connections, which is uh, uh, an event that I can monitor for the server, and I've had in the trace trace messages. So for any inbound messages, you're going to be able to just uh, just uh, do something with them. And what I've done is is send them here to the second loop, so QMH there, uh, and and when when a packet arrives, I format it to my liking and I'll display it. That that's really all all, all it is. If you want to see a quick way to do your own um, your own uh, MQTT, so this is a new VI. Sorry, I'm on the other screen. So um, I go to the add-ons, and in the add-ons, we've got the LabVIEW open source project palette. A lot of stuff there, but you see the MQTT at the base. It's a lot of drive through just to get there, but eventually you end up into the MQTT broker or client. And in there, there are a couple of drop VIs. So I'll use a drop VI with tracing because that's probably the one that, that you'd like to use if you want to trace it. Just drop it on your block diagram. You see how very similar it is to what I've, I've shown to you. Um, in this latest, latest version, I've, I've created a standard you know, TCP communication. You can reuse whichever communication uh, connection you want. Uh, but I assume that TCP is probably the, the basic that, that, that you'll want. This can be found in, um, again, the MQTT under MQTT connection. So don't go into the client server, go into the connection here, and you have the local queue connections, TCP connections, and WebSocket connection. WebSocket connection is a wrapper, a wrapper on Sam Sharp's uh, WebSocket uh, tools. I haven't done a WebSocket, a secured WebSocket. I know it works in 2020, so you can check in with the, on Sam Sharp's uh, uh, WebSocket project. It's also an open source project. Uh, and I haven't installed it, but there's a secured TCP for LabVIEW 2020. This is LabVIEW 2019 for this presentation, so that's why it's not there. This is something that you've seen in my slides, MQTT control packets. So you can you can go and, and see if I want to publish. Here's the API for the publish, get the flag, extract the flag, get the topic names. So everything you need for, for communication in there. I'll try to keep that on the side. All right. So 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 it's as simple as that. And you you can you can just just change your uh, you know. If you run this this here, it's gonna just run as a uh, as a broker and 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 monitor the connections on that port that you've configured. The tracer is injectable right there. Simple. Uh, maybe I can see where's show class library. Yeah. Two methods to override. That's it. They're completely virtual. Uh, I'll leave that up to you. This is a bit out of scope for, for this uh, presentation. So, OK, I run my project, uh, not my project, my, my broker. I'll monitor the, 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 the messages coming in. And let's go with our first demo, which is a publish and subscribe demo. Uh, I've got two windows here. And they're, they're implementation of uh, 
in this case, not the MQTT broker, but the client. So you see there are five nodes here, drop VIs, same thing. So I'm reusing, I've copied the image here of what I'm using for each. So, so you've got access to all the, all the palette, of course, uh, that you can, you can dive in. I'll let you explore that. Uh, but so I've dropped, I've dropped this VI and out of the box, uh, I, I decided to keep, to keep exactly this, uh, this topic. I've just added a serializer here that for now will be uh, using the default serializer. If you don't put this node here, that's going to use the lab view flat and unflatten behind the scenes, which will not be compatible with anything outside lab view unless, well, you do some hard decoding uh, unflattening in Python or JavaScript, of course. So, uh, and the second, so that was the subscriber, uh, the, the, the publisher, and the subscriber is the second down the line. It's essentially the same thing, except now that when you connect, you need to register to subscribe as well. So I subscribe to my topic name, which is the topic that is being published uh, by, the, by the publisher. And so that, that's the only link that you need between the two. Let's see that. So if I connect, you see that I've got the first connection and I'm starting to, uh, to get my messages. You see how they're encoded, really unreadable, not very useful. We're going to use JSON a little bit later. All right. And then uh, if I connect, I've got now a second connection, but I'm not subscribed yet. So, so it's really, you know, subscriber decides when he subscribes, when it subscribes, when it stops subscribing, and to get, uh, to get uh, the data uh, as they want. So the subscriber doesn't have any, um, any control on, this, on the update rate. Of the of the messages, so if I were to to publish much faster, uh, you'd have to handle all, all these. Uh, I don't know if normal brokers allow to throttle uh, the, the the kind of the, the number of messages. This is something that maybe maybe we can we can add in in the broker or in the subscription uh, mechanism later on. Uh, it's something that I think would be useful when when you're worried about uh, the bandwidth or you don't need to have, you know. All the noise and, the, and 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 you just want want to have one point out of ten, for example. So there you go. Uh, very very simple presentation. Like this. All right, I'm going to clear my log. That's for the pub sub. Let's go to the request reply. And again, these are fairly. Uh, fairly straightforward. I used again the same publisher, although I I added it uh, uh, with uh, I extended it with a, my private data. My private data here is just a data bus that looks like the interior of your object or your your you know if you had the, for example one of uh, P Peter's workers running there. Uh, your private data is the private data it's, that that would be your wor workers. Uh, uh, worker object or, or w whichever framework you use you use that for and and here I'm I'm basically configuring my own name because I know that I'm gonna I'm a subsystem and I will um, I will publish with a topic that starts with service in this case so service slash my state and that will allow uh, a subscriber to say, look, I just want the messages that are related to service and not for pump or for, uh, you know, DMM number three. So uh, that allows you some flexibility there. So all, all of this piping is, is really just, uh, just to build, uh, to, to, to receive, um, what is this? So this one is the service. So the service is waiting for a command. It doesn't do anything. It's waiting for a command. And when there's a command, it replies, right? So that's my, a, my service is there to provide a reply. And on the other side um, is the requester. And the requester is also, as you see, starting from this, the same publish uh, template, a little bit extended where it has a name for itself, the requester in this case, it knows where to send a message, it wants to query service, and it 
will store the state of the service uh, when it responds. And the goal here is to package, um, to send a command on, on request, that will be my send request here. And when I send a request, I will publish a packet that will be received by, that will be transmitted to the service. The service, when it receives it, will reply. Where will it reply? It will reply onto my response URI that I've put here. I'm going to just open this, uh, this packet. And this is kind of, uh, the mechanism that I use to not to to build a framework on top of MQTT to be able to give a reply instead uh, to a particular person instead of broadcasting the response to everyone. Like here's my state, and ten thousand nodes might 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 get it, although they never request that that reply. I want to specifically target uh, the response to a, a, a specific. Uh, to a specific node, and that node is responsible for listening for that topic that it created. The process here, if you if you will, is that we have a service that is running. Let me start my service, and my service is running right now. You see my connection went up, and my requester connects as well. They're not talking yet. I will request get state from the, the service, and I will say, please send that back to me on the state, for example, uh, on my own queue. So my queue will be named requester. So I'm going to say requester slash state as the um, as the, the reply address. And if I do that, I receive the, the answer. So we can examine the the I'm sorry if it's small. I don't know if if everyone can make make it, but uh, so we sent a message on service get state with a certain payload, and the payload included requester state as the, the response address, and our service computed the state and sent it back on the desired address and with the payload that I know how to decrypt. So. That's that. That's basically the request and response uh, way of doing it. Now, I didn't use any any fancy method. You can probably use something like a remote procedure call, uh, for for example, JSON RPC or XML RPC. If you use if you're familiar with SOAP, SOAP. Um, to encode your request and reply so that you embed error codes, error messages, and you can you can do all the piping under underneath. Um, I I didn't go there. I didn't want to complicate the, the the demo too much. So so that's that's where it is. And finally, I think oh, I'm running out of time for the main main event. I created a model here, and my model controller is. Uh, essentially just a state machine that I'm calling here every 200 millisecond. And I'm computing a final state based on a set point. That's really all it is. And I'm publishing my state every now and then. So, so um, as soon as I connect, as you can see, I'm publishing my state. So this is not a control uh, any any you know UI. I cannot control. It's really just an indicator. So now I'm going to call my client and my client. So those two are two clients, two LabVIEW clients that stem from the exact same kind of of pattern. You recognize the same the same pattern here, and and in this viewer, that's where I can um, control my 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 process. I am. I am registered to display the state as it's published, and I can also change the set points at will. I'm going to leave this open. And for, I'm sorry if I'm running two, three minutes late. I just want to show uh, around what, what is happening here, but I will no, not okay. dive into yeah. it. It's OK. Take, take uh, your time, yeah, and the five additional minutes is fine. Yeah. OK, OK. I'll try to contain myself to five minutes uh, because I want to show the Python stuff as well. Uh, but 
I think you will just have to go into the code yourself and 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 figure it out. It's really simple Python code, so so I don't I don't have to uh, to really be uh, I won't be of of any help for Python developers out there. <laughs> So uh, I've connected with a third a third node, but this one will call the MQTT client, the LabVIEW MQTT py, uh, py in in the folder, and as you can see, I can also control it from here. The others react to it. That's that's really really asynchronous, and and these two don't don't know don't know of each other. It's really really just calling the Python nodes here, uh, connecting, disconnecting, and all the likes. So um, there's also a Python GUI uh, that you can call. Oh, it's launching on my other screen. So as you, you can tell that, uh, you know, it's really, really simple. Let's connect. So we've got a fourth one that is connected now. And uh, I can still enable and control and go there. And I can even use my Python scripts. There's a Python script. Uh, that I can run to run a cycle of many temperatures. So I'm going to run this. I'm going to try it one more time. Okay, that's working. So I seem to have a, a reference problem somewhere. So I'll just run a, a quick, a quick script. But that script, all it does is, uh, is it's 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 updating. As you can see here, I've got three steps. It's a uh, PCR cycle. That's just a fancy way of, you know, um, to have the yes, a demo effect. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the uh, PCR is probably well known now because that's a way to amplify DNA. Uh, it, I work uh, in biomedical, you know, device research center, and so so this is something that we've done a lot for 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 uh, in in the last year for COVID. Um, so there you go. There. Nothing, nothing really fancy there. Uh, you can look at the code. I'm gonna relinquish the re remainder of my time uh, to other speakers, and I'm open for questions. Thank you very much. I will um, share back my presentation to give you links on the last page. There you go. So you've got a few links there um, to. Um, to GitHub projects, uh, open source. I encourage you vividly to use the um, uh, the issue tracker if you find any issues or if you have requests uh, for for any features with the client, the connection, the broker, everything. I mean, go ahead. I've got a few videos out there uh, with the links as well. And if you're interested in uh, a bit more into the different message patterns, message exchange patterns, uh, not just the pub sub and the request reply, but pipelining and things like that. Um, I did a presentation with Sarah Zalowski from JKI at NI Week 2019. It's on the LabVIEW Wiki. You can go there, watch the YouTube. You have all the slides on the code. Uh, it ended up with a MQTT, uh, MQTT presentation demo as well. No, Francois, I, I am completely new to MQTT and the uh, and the broker you've written. So, I mean, how does it compare in terms of performance to something else out there? Is that something you can comment on? Uh, yes. Um, from um, you know, it's a very very small packet uh, overhead. So so when you are sending bytes, really really fast. Uh, it, it, I haven't tested, uh, you know, did benchmarks, but you can exceed one kilohertz, especially local. If you if you're sending packets uh, of uh, over the internet, you're really bothered by latency more than than anything. Now, the the big performance increase uh, compared to to other protocols is the amount of bytes that you're sending. So if you've got a device that that runs on a battery, it's going to be 10 times more efficient than uh, sending, uh, keeping a, a HTTP connection and, and doing uh, doing um, doing all of that uh, over a long period of time. You're going to save, you know, battery life by by 90 percent probably. Um, now, if you're going to use TLS, 
then all the all of the all of the overhead will be with the TLS most likely, and you won't gain much on going to to IUT, uh, not IUT, but MQTT. Probably a little bit, but but overall not that much. Um, however, this is something that I haven't looked at personally, but there is the 5.0 uh, of MQTT uh, that is the specification is spe uh, specifically geared towards uh, towards these uh, these. Uh, these features of security and there's a 15th packet that is the OHOT packet. That OHOT packet will allow you to do uh, encoding, encryption and, and to set up uh, uh, even OHOT 2.0 uh, connection with, uh, with, uh, with services out there. So uh, I don't know how much it will, it will help with, uh, with, the, uh, with the, the speed of, uh, you know, the latency or the bandwidth uh, needed to transmit the packets. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. As a side uh, for for MQTT, there's there's, to my knowledge, only one protocol that is even lower level than that. It's uh, the CO COAP, and I think CoAP. Uh, it's it's being used, I think, by by some MQs out there. Um, and it's even you know smaller overhead, but you don't have PubSub if I'm not mistaken. It's really just uh, just just sending packets. So if you were to use a UDP, for example, that 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 might be even lower consumption. Right. Okay. So we are looking for another presentation from you on that next one. Then. <laughs> <laughs> now this is very good. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. I think, uh, as you can see in the comments, there are a lot of people who, is, who have found this useful. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs>